Lesson 1, Second Part. Más pronunciación. Hola. Did you learn well all I taught you in the first lesson about the pronunciation? Are you sure? Don't lie. Ok, ok. Anyway, if you didn't or you're not very sure you did, you better go back to this video before we continue because we need it. I mean it. We need it. So now, are you really ready? Ok then, here we go. Why do we need a second part on the pronunciation? Well, basically, because I didn't want a video that was so long you didn't want to watch it. But also because we need to have the basis clear if we want to go to a deeper level. And what's that deeper level? Well, just a couple of things that we didn't talk about. The diphthongs and the accents. So, let's begin with the diphthongs. What are they, exactly? Well, that's the way we call two vowels that are pronounced as a single syllable and they are the key to a perfect Spanish pronunciation. We can separate the Spanish vowels into two categories. Strong vowels, A, E, O, and weak vowels, I, U. And when we combine strong and weak vowels or two weak vowels, we get diphthongs. In all of them, the weak vowel loses most of its power and it is pronounced much weaker than the strong one. Do you understand the names now? Okay, let's take a look at all the possibilities we have and just listen carefully. A, I, 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 aire, e, i, ei, ei, rey, rey, o, I, hoy, 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 a, u, au, au, autobús, autobús, e, u, eu, eu, Europa, Europa, o, u. O, estadounidense, estadounidense. I, A, IA, hacia, hacia. I, E, IE, fiesta, fiesta. I, O, IO, IO. Ra, dio, ra, dio, u, a, ua, ua, suave, suave, u, e, ue, luego, luego, u, o, uo, cuota, cuota, i, U, U, viudo, viudo, U, I, Ui, fui, fui. Let's repeat all of them. I, ei, oi, au, eu, ou, ya, ie, io, ua, ue, uo, iu, ui. And now, we have to focus on the accents. As I said in my previous video, accents don't change the pronunciation of the vowels, but they do have other purposes. So let's see all of them separately. First, they modify the stress of the words. Where to put and stress in a Spanish word is very, very important so that we don't confuse words like público, público, and público. That's why we always know where to put the stress in a word when we read it. The general rule is the following. If the word ends in a vowel, an N, or an S, 
the stress falls in the last syllable but one and otherwise always in the last one. For example, cosa, caracol, cosa, caracol. And when we want to break that rule, we have to write an accent on the vowel of the syllable that we are stressing so that everybody knows that that is the reason why we are breaking the rule. So we have three possible situations. The stress is in the last syllable of a word ended in a vowel, an N or an S. Just like in camión, camión, on. And notice the diphthong there. The stress in the last but one syllable of a word not ended in a vowel, an N or an S. Ángel, ángel. The stress is in any other syllable. Pájaro, pájaro. Fácilmente, fácilmente. Second, they help us to differentiate words that are written the same way. So, for example, we write el and el so that we don't confuse them in a written text, even if both words are actually pronounced the same way. And three, they break diphthongs. Do you remember them? I hope so. Well, if a strong and a weak vowel or two weak vowels are together, but we want to pronounce them separately, we have to write an accent in the weak vowel or the second weak vowel. So, for example, it's not the same to say Hacia and hacia. Hacia, hacia. So once again, I hope you liked it and you're looking forward to the next lesson. See you next time, right here. Hasta luego.